Will the special counsel probe lead to presidential pardons? The new report's breaking down the White House's new battle plan. Shaking things up, the big reason behind big changes in the president's legal team. And he's set for parole, but still creating controversy. What O.J. Simpson said about his past before a panel decided his future. Welcome back to Early Start this Friday morning. I'm Christine Roman. Friday, Friday. Happy Friday to you. I'm Miguel Marquez. It is 30 minutes past the hour. Up first, explosive new reporting this morning. The president's lawyers are looking for ways to undermine the Russia investigation by special counsel Robert Mueller. The Washington Post and New York Times report attorneys and aides are scouring the backgrounds of Mueller and his staff searching for conflicts of interest they can use to undercut the Russia probe. The papers cite several sources familiar with the research effort. The Washington Post also reporting the president has asked about his power to pardon aides, family members, even himself. One advisor told the Post the president was simply curious about the reach of his pardoning authority. Uh, this follows the president's earlier attacks on Mueller and other officials connected to the Russia investigation. CNN's Jeff Zeleny has more this morning for us from the White House. Christine and Miguel, President Trump and the White House increasingly focused on that special counsel's investigation, that independent investigation into the Russian meddling of the 2016 election. But there are indications that the investigation is spreading beyond simple election meddling. President Trump made that indication in his interview with the New York Times earlier this week when he talked about special prosecutor Robert Mueller and the idea that he could be looking into the Trump family's uh, finances. Now, the president said he thought that would be outside of the purview of that, but this is increasingly uh, dominating much of the conversation here at the White House. As the legal team is looking at strategies here, the Washington Post and the New York Times are both reporting this morning that the president is also looking into ways to disrupt this investigation. They're looking into the background of the uh, attorneys working on this investigation. It just shows how much time and attention here at the White House is being focused on this. So much fallout reverberating from that interview with the New York Times earlier this week about the president expressing his blistering disappointment with the attorney general. It has sent shockwaves throughout this uh, west wing of the White House, largely because the attorney general is one of the most loyal soldiers in the Trump army. He was one of the earliest supporters. He was, in fact, the earliest Republican senator to sign on. But as we end this week, the six-month mark of this presidency, this Russia investigation, dominating many things here at the White House. Christine and Miguel. Jeff Zeleny, thank you very much. As for the attorney general, he's shrugging off President Trump's attack. The president said he should have hired someone else if he knew Sessions would recuse himself in the Russia probe. The attorney general is determined to stay put for the time being. I have uh, the honor of serving in, as attorney general. It's something that uh, uh, goes beyond any thought I would have ever had for myself. We love this job, we love this department, and I plan to continue to do so as long as uh, that is appropriate. Now with more on the Attorney General's response and damage control at the White House, CNN's Jessica Snyder in Washington. Christina Miguel, Attorney General Jeff Sessions, he seems to be rebuffing speculation that he might resign in the wake of President Trump's harsh words about him in the New York Times. Well, of course, the president expressed his anger at Sessions' decision to recuse himself from the Russia investigation back on March 2nd. The president saying in that New York Times interview that the decision was, quote, unfair to the president and that President Trump wouldn't have asked him to become attorney general if he knew Sessions would remove himself from overseeing the investigation. Of course, those comments drew a lot of speculation, but White House Deputy Press Secretary uh, Sarah Huckabee Sanders, she's clarified in part, saying that the president does have confidence in Sessions, but really was just disappointed in the decision Sessions made to recuse. Clearly, he has confidence in him or he would not be the attorney general. I think you uh, know this president well enough to know that if he wanted somebody uh, to take an action, he would make that quite clear. Well, Sarah Huckabee Sanders also added to these comments, saying the president does not intend to fire Mueller, but that the president believes the special counsel should not move outside the scope of the investigation, though, of course, the scope of that investigation is up for interpretation about how broad it might be. Christina Miguel. All right, Jessica, thank you for that. Now, with all that in mind, the president is reshuffling the legal team uh, charged with helping him navigate this Russia probe. Two sources tell CNN the president's longtime personal attorney, Mark Kasowitz, 
will see his role as lead lawyer on the Russia issue diminish. Now, Washington, veteran Washington attorney John Dowd and another Trump lawyer, Jay Sekulow, will take the lead as the president's personal attorneys on the Russia inquiry. The sources say that by working outside the White House, Dowd and Sekulow's dealings with the president will be protected by the same attorney-client privilege afforded all U.S. citizens. Inside the White House, attorney Ty Cobb will take the lead on legal and communication strategy for Russia. He'll be effectively replacing communication strategist Mark Corallo, who resigned on Thursday. All right, Senate Judiciary Committee Chairman Chuck Grassley threatening to subpoena both Donald Trump Jr. and Paul Manafort to appear before his committee. We ask him for voluntary appearance. I've indicated that we would subpoena if they don't come. Is there a deadline associated with that? Uh, we are having hearing next uh, Wednesday, so obviously we want to hear right away. Trump Jr. and Manafort are scheduled to testify before the Senate Judiciary Committee Wednesday, but neither man has publicly confirmed he will appear. The top Democrat on the committee is Senator, California Senator Dianne Feinstein, also reiterating the subpoena threat. Now, we're also learning this morning Jared Kushner's closed-door session with the Senate Intel Committee next week will be with staff. It's not clear yet when he'll meet with senators themselves. This is now being called an interview, not testimony. Meantime, CNN has exclusively learned Jared Kushner's status as a top aide to President Trump still being used to lure Chinese investors to his family's New Jersey development. Kushner's name being used in an online promotion by two businesses working with Kushner companies, describing him in Chinese as, quote, the celebrity of the family and, quote, Mr. Perfect Jared Kushner. It comes after his family apologized in May for using Kushner's name during a, a sales pitch. I thought you were Mr. Perfect. I am Mr. Perfect. They clearly have it wrong. Uh, confidant of President Trump now under consideration for White House Communications Director. Two senior administration officials telling CNN Anthony Scaramucci has been interviewed for the job and was spotted at the White House Thursday night. The hedge fund manager was an advisor for President Trump's transition team. If he is hired, the big question... What happens to other key members of the communications team? Sean Spicer, the press secretary, has stayed mostly behind the scenes during the communications director's search. It is unclear what happens once that post is filled. All right, the U.S. is fining ExxonMobil for violating Russian sanctions while Secretary of State Rex Tillerson was still in charge. The Treasury Department is slapping a $2 million fine on ExxonMobil, claiming it demonstrated reckless disregard for the sanctions. It stems from a 2014 deal between Exxon executives and this man, Igor Session. Session runs the state-run oil company Rosneft. He is a close ally of Russian President Vladimir Putin. His assets were blocked as part of U.S. sanctions in 2014 on Russia uh, for, for annexing Crimea. Now, the Treasury didn't specify the Exxon executives involved and didn't name Tillerson. Tillerson stepped down as CEO last year, but had personal dealings with Session when he ran ExxonMobil. And this move raises concerns over his deep business ties in Russia. Exxon says the fine is fundamentally unfair. All right, another record high for the NASDAQ, a third in a row, the longest winning streak since 2015. It is evidence investors are unfazed by President Trump's political troubles, higher corporate profits, and a strong earnings season. More on this in a few moments, but a stunning string of record highs in the stock market. It is still Made in America Week, and the president is wrapping it up by touting a deal between these three companies, pharmaceutical companies Pfizer and Merck, and manufacturer Corning. Together, they will produce a new type of glass for injectable drugs. Pharmaceutical glass packaging will now be made in America. That's a big step. That's a big statement. We're very proud of that. Thank you very much, by the way. New this morning reports the president's legal team is looking to undercut the special counsel on Russia. It could set up a major conflict between the White House and Robert Mueller. And the president's legal team shaken up. Who is stepping away from the spotlight and why? And O.J. Simpson is set to go free after nine years behind bars. What he's saying about his past as he looks forward to life on the outside. I guess October is when that official parole happens. Sometime right? in October, October, indeed. Good morning. Welcome to Early Start. I'm Christine Romans. And I'm Miguel Marquez. It is Friday, July 21st. Happy Friday, Friday to you. 
It is 5 a.m. here on the East Coast. Up first, explosive new reporting this morning. The president's lawyers are looking for ways to undermine the Russia investigation by special counsel Robert Mueller. The Washington Post and New York Times report attorneys and aides are scouring the backgrounds of Mueller and his staff, searching for conflicts of interest they can use to undercut the Russia probe. The paper cites several sources familiar with the research effort. The Washington Post also reporting the president has asked about his, his power to pardon aides, family members, even himself. Now, one advisor told the Post, you know, the president was simply curious about the reach of his pardoning authority. This follows the president's earlier attacks on Mueller and, and other officials connected to the Russia investigation. CNN's Jeff Zeleny has more from the White House. Christina Miguel, President Trump and the White House increasingly focused on that special counsel's investigation, that independent investigation into the Russian meddling of the 2016 election. But there are indications that the investigation is spreading beyond simple election meddling. President Trump made that indication in his interview with The New York Times earlier this week when he talked about special prosecutor Robert Mueller and the idea that he could be looking into the Trump family's uh, finances. Now, the president said he thought that would be outside of the purview of that, but this is increasingly uh, dominating much of the conversation here at the White House. As the legal team is looking at strategies here, the Washington Post and the New York Times are both reporting this morning that the president is also looking into ways to disrupt this investigation. They're looking into the background of the uh, attorneys working on this investigation. It just shows how much time and attention here at the White House is being focused on this. So much fallout reverberating from that interview with the New York Times earlier this week about the president expressing his blistering disappointment with the attorney general. It has sent shockwaves throughout this uh, west wing of the White House, largely because the attorney general is one of the most loyal soldiers in the Trump army. He was one of the earliest supporters. He was, in fact, the earliest Republican senator to sign on. But as we end this week, the six-month mark of this presidency, this Russia investigation, dominating many things here at the White House. Christina Miguel. Thanks to Jeff Zeleny. Now, with all that in mind, the president is reshuffling the legal team charged with helping him navigate the Russia probe. Two sources tell CNN the president's longtime personal attorney, Mark Kasowitz, will see his role as lead, lo lead lawyer on the Russian investigation diminished. Now, veteran Washington attorney John Dowd and another Trump lawyer, Jay Sekulow, will take the lead as the president's personal attorneys on the Russia inquiry. The sources say by working outside the White House, a Dowd and Sekulow's dealings with the president will be protected by the same attorney-client privilege afforded all U.S. citizens. Inside the White House, attorney Ty Cobb will take the lead on legal and communication strategy for Russia. He'll be effectively replacing communication strategist Mark Corallo, who resigned on Thursday. Now, helping us understand all this, bring it into sharp focus this morning is political economist Greg Valliere, chief strategist at Horizon Investments. Good morning, morning Greg. to you. Good morning. Uh, Hi, so, guys. there is a lot of movement at the White House. Uh, I take it this doesn't uh, have much of an effect on the stock market or how the, uh, the economy is going. Well, it's affected the dollar, I think. Finally, after hmm. months and months of people saying this doesn't make, mean anything for the markets. Oh, no, I do think the dollar's weakness is because of this. And things have gotten worse this week for the agenda in particular, which the markets really care about. Well, talk to me a little bit about Russia fever and how each of these developments, uh, you know, kind of puts the agenda further on the back page, if you will. Where are we on health care? Where are we on tax reform? Well, first of all, Christine, I think this obsession that the president has with picking the scab. When we were kids, our parents told us, don't pick scabs. So he keeps <laughs> picking the scab on Russia. And now you have a situation in the last 48 hours where, you know, maybe he's being investigated for obstruction of justice. What does he do? He indicates that he would like to obstruct justice. So I think the story's gotten a lot worse for uh, tax reform, certainly for a budget deal. And I think the the health bill cannot be resurrected. Even if everything was going peachy keen at the White House and they had a setback with the, uh, the, the health care bill dying, I mean, they were counting on that in order to get to tax reform. I mean, where does this leave things now? Absolutely right. The, 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 the progression was going to be health reform, budget, 
taxes. Th those were the three. Well, if health reform is dead, uh, that does not set a very good stage for the budget fight, which has the Republicans equally divided. Right. So I'm not sure this very radical House budget will even make it through the Senate. If they don't get a budget, that means there's not a reconciliation resolution, sounding wonky this morning, but you need that <laughs> resolution to move ahead on taxes. So if this progression is now derailed, yeah. I think we're looking at 2018 before we get anything done yeah. on taxes. If you can't be wonky with us at 5.08 in the morning, <laughs> you can't be wonky right. anywhere, right? Yeah. There are three yeah. months to open enrollment. This is what is so shocking to me. There are three months to open enrollment where 10 million people are going to have to sign up for health care and another 22 million who are uninsured right now uh, could be or should be under the law. They should be penalized to get a little fine on their tax return next year for not getting insurance if they don't, right? So this is still the law of the land, yet we have no idea what the next step is going to be in terms of in terms of fixing it. And indeed, the president keeps going back to the Russia scab. I think that's a really good analogy. In particular, we heard yesterday from Sarah Huckabee Sk Sanders about, um, about Mueller and whether he would stay in that job. Let's listen. Look, I mean, I can't predict everything that could possibly take place in the future and what Mueller could potentially do that might create uh, outrageous, you know, reason not to take action. So I, I'm not going to talk about hypotheticals. I can talk about where we are today, and that's the position of the president. Knowing what you know about the demeanor of the president, about um, how thick or thin his skin is in regards to um, Russia, how dangerous politically, um, I mean, both for, 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 for the political economy and the overall yeah. economy and for just stability in Washington, is, the, is this Mueller situation? It's huge, Christine. I think that this extraordinary interview with the New York Times made it clear that if Mueller goes to uh, Trump's finances, gets close to Trump's family, he could get fired. And I think if, if he gets fired, that could lead to a real crisis, a, an impeachment crisis. I, as the summer began, I told everybody, including you, that maybe there was a 5% chance of impeachment. It could be up to 20 or 25%, the way things are unfolding right now. But you said something a second ago about uh, the budget and tax reform being moved into 2018. Right. Is that really, I mean, the whole idea of getting this done now was to do it ahead of right. the, 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 the midterm elections. Right. Is anything really going to get done in 2018 in Washington, D.C.? Oh, I, th I do think there will be a modest tax bill in 2018. I just think it'll take a long time, and the budget fight will, will complicate this. And Christine is right. For the insurers, they're going to have to announce their rates. And I sure. think that for Donald Trump to say, I don't own health reform, oh, no, he yeah. owns health reform. And I think the Republicans are going to have to go to the Democrats and say, we need to help the insurers. So, yeah. so there, will be, there will be some things happening later this year, but the timetable has been greatly delayed because Trump can't stay on message. He has so much leverage. I mean, he holds all the cards in, in what happens with health care reform. And I, I mean it because his agencies are the ones who have to pay for right. the advertising and do a you know, public relations campaign to roll out, uh, you know, remind people it is open enrollment and this is the number you call and this is, these are the options for you. Yep. Um, his, his, his IRS has to do the, the, the fines subsidies the, as well. and the subsidies, you know. So, I mean, it's, it's incredibly important. This is happening right now and it affects millions of people and, Quick and make make no mistake christine he owns it yeah L quickly does he also own the stock market rally because privately he tells people in bedminster this weekend he was you know a lot of people were congratulating him thanking him for uh, making yep. them richer because of the stock market does he own this too you got to be fair. I mean, there's a real pro-business climate here in this city, and he has a lot to do with it. But the fundamentals are great. Low inflation, low unemployment, steady interest rates, good corporate earnings. There's a lot that goes into that. But again, guys, watch the dollar. The dollar's really in free fall, and I think one of the reasons is all of this dysfunction in Washington. All right, so the market reaction to the dysfunction into the Russia probe is in the dollar. Meanwhile, people with money keep making money. Right. Working class. I don't know if we've really seen the recovery quite yet, but maybe yeah. that's the more. Thanks, Greg. We'll yeah. talk to you in a couple, Thanks, in a couple of minutes. You bet. Uh, the U.S. is fining ExxonMobil for violating uh, Russian sanctions while Secretary of State Rex Tillerson was still in charge. The Treasury Department is slapping a $2 million fine on the company, claiming it demonstrated reckless disregard for the sanctions. It stems from a 2014 deal between Exxon executives and this guy, Igor Session. Session runs the state-run oil company in Russia, Rosneft. 
and is a close ally, of course, to Russian President Vladimir Putin. His assets, Sessions' assets, were blocked as part of U.S. sanctions in 2014 on Russia for annexing Crimea. Now, the Treasury Department didn't specify which Exxon executives were involved. It did not name Tillerson. Tillerson, of course, stepped down as CEO last year. He had personal business dealings with Session when he ran ExxonMobil, and this move raises concerns over his deep business ties in Russia. Exxon says the find is fundamentally unfair, and Exxon, in response, filed a complaint against the Treasury Secretary, Steven Mnuchin, adding who taught... New this morning reports the president's legal team is looking to undercut the special counsel on Russia. It could set up a major conflict between the White House and Robert Mueller. The president's legal team shaken up who is stepping away from the spotlight and why. And O.J. Simpson set to go free. What he's saying about his past as he looks forward to life on the outside. Good morning and welcome to Early Start. I'm Miguel Marquez. And I'm Christine Friday. Romans. Happy Friday to you. It is Friday, July 21st. It is 4 a.m. In the East. Good morning, everyone. Up first, explosive new reporting this morning. Uh, the president's lawyers are looking for ways to undermine the investigation by special counsel Robert Mueller. The Washington Post and the New York Times report attorneys and aides are scouring the backgrounds of Mueller and his staff, searching for conflicts of interest they can use to undercut the Russia probe. The papers cite several sources familiar with this research effort. Uh, the Washington Post also reporting the president has asked about his power to pardon aides, family members, even himself. One advisor told the Post the president was simply curious about the reach of his pardoning authority. This follows the president's earlier attacks on Mueller and other officials connected to the Russia investigation. CNN's Jeff Zeleny has more from the White House. Christine and Miguel, President Trump and the White House increasingly focused on that special counsel's investigation, that independent investigation into the Russian meddling of the 2016 election. But there are indications that the investigation is spreading beyond simple election meddling. President Trump made that indication in his interview with The New York Times earlier this week when he talked about special prosecutor Robert Mueller and the idea that he could be looking into the Trump family's uh, finances. Now, the president said he thought that would be outside of the purview of that. But this is increasingly uh, dominating much of the conversation here at the White House. As the legal team is looking at strategies here, The Washington Post and The New York Times are both reporting this morning that the president is also looking into ways to disrupt this investigation. They're looking into the background of the uh, attorneys working on this investigation. It just shows how much time and attention here at the White House is being focused on this. So much fallout reverberating from that interview with the New York Times earlier this week about the president expressing his blistering disappointment with the attorney general. It has sent shockwaves throughout this uh, west wing of the White House, largely because the attorney general is one of the most loyal soldiers in the Trump army. He was one of the earliest supporters. He was, in fact, the earliest Republican senator to sign on. But as we end this week, the six-month mark of this presidency, this Russia investigation, dominating many things here at the White House. Christina Miguel. All right, Jeff Zeleny, thank you for that. As for the attorney general, he is shrugging off President Trump's uh, biting attack. The president said he'd have hired someone else if he knew Sessions would recuse himself in the Russia probe. The attorney general is determined to stay put for the time being. I have uh, the honor of serving in, as attorney general. It's something that uh, uh, goes beyond any thought I would have ever had for myself. We love this job. We love this department. And I plan to continue to do so as long as uh, that is appropriate. With uh, more on the attorney general's response and damage control at the White House, CNN's Jessica Schneider for us in Washington. Christina Miguel, Attorney General Jeff Sessions, he seems to be rebuffing speculation that he might resign in the wake of President Trump's harsh words about him in the New York Times. Well, of course, the president expressed his anger at Sessions' decision to recuse himself from the Russia investigation back on March 2nd. The president saying in that New York Times interview that the decision was, quote, unfair to the president and that President Trump wouldn't have asked him to become attorney general if he knew Sessions would remove himself from overseeing the investigation. 
Of course, those comments drew a lot of speculation. But White House Deputy Press Secretary uh, Sarah Huckabee Sanders, she's clarified in part, saying that the president does have confidence in Sessions, but really was just disappointed in the decision Sessions made to recuse. Clearly, he has confidence in him or he would not be the attorney general. I think you uh, know this president well enough to know that if he wanted somebody uh, to take an action, he would make that quite clear. Christina Miguel. Thanks, Jessica, for that. Now, with all that in mind, the president is reshuffling the legal team charged with helping him navigate that Russia probe. Two sources tell CNN the president's longtime personal attorney, Mark Kasowitz, will see his role as lead lawyer on the Russia investigation diminish. And now veteran Washington attorney John Dowd and another Trump lawyer, Jay Sekulow, will lead uh, the president's personal attorneys as on that Russia inquiry. The sources say by working outside the White House, Dowd and Sekulow's dealings with the president will be protected by the same attorney-client privilege afforded all U.S. citizens inside the White House. Attorney Ty Cobb will take the lead on legal and communication strategy for Russia. He'll be effectively replacing communication strategist Mark Corallo, who resigned on Thursday. Senate Judiciary Committee Chairman Chuck Grassley threatening to subpoena both Donald Trump Jr. and Paul Manafort to appear before his committee. We ask him for voluntary appearance. I've indicated that we would subpoena if they don't come. Is there a deadline associated with that? Uh, we are having a hearing next uh, Wednesday, so obviously we want to hear right away. Uh, Trump Jr. and Manafort are scheduled to testify before the Senate Judiciary Committee on Wednesday, but neither has publicly confirmed he will appear. The top Democrat on the committee, Calif California Senator Dianne Feinstein, also reiterating the subpoena threat. We're also learning this morning Jared Kushner's closed-door session with the Senate Intelligence Committee next week will be with staff. It's not yet clear when he will meet with senators. This is now being called... Miguel, an interview, not testimony. Huh. Uh, meantime, CNN has exclusively learned Jared Kushner's status as a top aide to President Trump is still being used to lure Chinese investors to his family's New Jersey development. Kushner's name being used in an on, on an online promotion by two businesses working with Kushner companies, describing him in Chinese as, quote, the celebrity of the family and Mr. Perfect Jared Kushner. It comes after his family apologized in May for using Kushner's name during a sales pitch. All right, a confidant of uh, President Trump now under consideration for White House Communications Director. Uh, two, two senior administration officials telling CNN Anthony Scaramucci has been interviewed for the job and was spotted at the White House Thursday night. He is a hedge fund manager. He was an advisor for the president's transition team. If he is hired, the big question, what happens to the other key members of the communications team, uh, Sean Spicer? The press secretary has stayed mostly behind the scenes during the communications director's search. It is unclear what happens once that post is filled. All right, the U.S. is fining ExxonMobil for violating Russian sanctions while Secretary of State Rex Tillerson was in charge. The Treasury Department is slapping a $2 million fine on the company, claiming it demonstrated reckless disregard for those Russia sanctions. This stems from a 2014 deal between Exxon execs and this man, Igor Session. Session runs the state-run oil company Rosneft and is a close ally of Russian President Vladimir Putin. His assets were blocked as part of U.S. sanctions in 2014 on Russia for annexing Crimea. Now, the Treasury Department did not specify the Exxon executives involved. It did not name Tillerson. Tillerson stepped down as CEO last year but had personal business dealings with Session when he ran ExxonMobil. And this move raises concerns, again, over his deep business ties in Russia. Exxon says the fine is fundamentally unfair. And in response, filed a complaint against the Treasury Secretary, Steven Mnuchin, adding that the charges are inconsistent with the explicit guidance the White House issued at that time. Fascinating, isn't it? It's the Treasury Department versus the State Department. Oh, bizarre. I don't well, know if we've ever had versus, a situation like that. Not versus the State Department, versus ExxonMobil and the guy who right. runs the State Department used to run ExxonMobil at that time. It is a, uh, a tangled web. Discover the story only your DNA can tell. Order your kit now at Ancestry DNA. This is CNN Breaking News. Breaking news, President Trump's lawyers reportedly seeking to undercut Robert Mueller's Russia investigation. This is CNN Tonight. I'm Don Lemon. The Washington Post is reporting the president is asking whether he can pardon aides, family, even himself. 
That comes as he doubles down on his warning to Mueller uh, that looking into his family's finances would be a fireable offense. White House spokesman Sarah Huckabee Sanders saying Trump's warning made clear Mueller, quote, should not move outside the scope of the investigation. Now members of the president's own party are warning him not to fire Mueller. Meanwhile, Attorney General Jeff Sessions vowing to stay on the job, in his words, as long as that is appropriate. We have a lot to get to this evening. I want to get right, though, to CNN senior White House correspondent Jeff Zelny, CNN politics executive uh, editor at large, I should say, Chris Saliza, and political analyst April Ryan. My goodness, uh, every night there's something. Jeff, I want to get to this big news from the Washington Post tonight. Here's what the Post is reporting. Some of, and this is a quote, some of President uh, Trump's lawyers are exploring ways to limit or undercut special counsel Robert S. Mueller III's Russia investigation, building a case against what they allege are his conflicts of interest and discussing the president's authority to grant pardons, according to people familiar with the effort. Jeff, why would the president be asking about a pardon? Well, Don, this is something that uh, we got a glimpse of in the president's own interview with The New York Times that is still causing shockwaves more than 24 hours later. And it was uh, he was raising the question of a conflict of interest of a Robert to Mueller, the special prosecutor in this case, who is you know really conducting what is now a widening, deepening uh, investigation that appears to go beyond um, election meddling in the 2016 election. And it is clear the president and his team are focusing intently on the uh, potential conflicts of interest, as they're saying. But they're also talking about uh, pardons. This Washington Post story, very interesting in the sense that the president is basically talking aloud now. We've heard him in so many different respects, uh, you know, when he's talking about legislation, other things. Now he is uh, doing it on this uh, legal case here, and he is indeed asking uh, about his options. If, you know, as president, if he could pardon someone, if he could possibly even pardon himself. Now, this, I'm told that these are just discussions happening. This is the, at the very beginning of this investigation here. But, Donna, it just shows you how much time, energy, and effort uh, is now consuming the White House on this. On the sixth month of the president's time in office, this uh, begins the sixth month or ends the first six months, and it is something that is really all-consuming here. And that Jeff Sessions interview with uh, the president uh, um, um, about Jeff Sessions had a chilling effect in the words of one White House uh, official told me earlier today, Don, they said that the thinking generally is if the president can say that about the most loyal soldier that he has, what will he do to some of us if we don't do the right thing here? So at the end of the six month mark, this is not where anyone thought they would be, Don. Interesting. Uh, Chris, let's, let's talk about uh, what's going on here, because, in fact, the president talked about what he says are Mueller's conflicts of interest. And I want to read uh, from The New York Times. Sure. Uh, he said, we were interviewing, he was talking to Maggie uh, Haberman and Mr. Schmidt of, of The New York Times. He says, we're interviewing replacements at the FBI. Did you know Mueller was one of the people uh, that was being interviewed? Haberman, I did, actually. Trump, he was sitting in that chair. He, uh, we had a wonderful meeting, Haberman. The day before, right? And then Schmidt said, yeah, did, did he want the job? And then um, Trump says, the day before, of course, he was up here and he wanted, he wanted the job, Haberman. And he made that clear to you. He would have. And then Trump says, so now what happens is he leaves the office. Rosenstein leaves the office. The next day he is appointed special counsel. I said, what the hell is this all about? Talk about conflicts. But he was interviewing for the job. There were many other conflicts that I, ha I haven't said, but I will at some point. Chris, is he laying the groundwork there? Oh, yeah. Uh, and, and, and frankly, has been Don for a long time. Uh, I remember talking to you a month or two ago about this when Trump, was, Trump has done this before, but when he started describing it as uh, this whole special counsel investigation as a witch hunt, uh, as a hoax. Um, that's what he's doing. Uh, he's laying the groundwork, not that he's going to fire Bob Mueller, but that if he does, he will be able to point back and say, look, this guy wanted the FBI job. He didn't get it. He was mad. They, they you know, him and Rosenstein got together. He's, he's really good friends with Jim Comey. So we know Comey doesn't like me. One of his, oh, I'm spinning around. One of his lawyers, I'm getting too worked up. One of his lawyers uh, donated to uh, uh, Hillary Clinton. You know, I mean, there's all these things. All of these are just points that he is, he's throwing chum into the water, Don. It's what he does. He's throwing chum into the water. He's saying, well, I don't know. You know, we'll see what other conflicts of interest there are. But the point is of all of this, 
and is to lay the groundwork for if he does it, that he will have put justifications behind it. Um, now, are they justifications that I think are, are ultimately sort of uh, sellable to people outside of his base? No, but I don't think he's concerned about that. He's concerned about selling things to his base, and this stuff will work. He knows it. He's very good at that. Yeah. Uh, so calm down there. I mean, we don't I know. I'm sorry. We, we, I just, you know, I get, I, I'm Italian. I talk with my hands. I just start, you know, shaking around. We don't want you to spin out of control. But April, I want, this is uh, something that the New York Times is reporting just tonight, in addition to the Washington Post reports about possible pardons. And there's another quote, okay? President Trump's lawyers and aides are scouring the professional and political backgrounds of investigators hired by the special counsel, Robert S. Mueller III, looking for conflicts of interest they could use to discredit the investigation or even build a case to fire Mr. Mueller or get some members of his team recused, according to three people with knowledge of the research effort. It sounds like a concerted effort is ramping up April to defend the president, and they are exploring all their options, including discrediting the people who are investigating. Don, I'm glad you said that. Yes, there are a lot of options on the table, and to, including that. I heard that as well. And this goes, all of this goes to what Democrats, some Democrats I've been talking to uh, have been saying. They're saying that this president is not acting like a man who is innocent with all of these options that are on the table. And not only that, there's another option that I heard about uh, tonight, Don, before we went on, just before we went on from a Republican source. They said, look, they said, um, you know, uh, Deputy uh, U.S. Attorney General Rosenstein is, um, Rosenstein, excuse me, is under uh, the microscope, the negative microscope. And what's happening is they're, they're trying to craft it saying that he is allowed, this, this uh, special counsel, Mueller, to go beyond his scope. They're saying that Mueller's scope is limited and they're saying that he's going beyond his scope. And now they're looking at Rosenstein to see if indeed that they might be able to change out Rosenstein be it executive order from the president to go to another person. And if it does go to another person, if you look at succession, it could go to Rachel Brand, who is uh, uh, someone who is uh, a supporter of President Trump. And if indeed that's the case, she could actually rein Mueller in, possibly. So they're looking at so many different options mm -hmm. in this scenario. Yeah. Hey, I, hey, Don, can I just yeah. add something quick? Jeff, Jeff mentioned a chilling effect as it relates to Sessions and Trump's comments about Sessions. I, I, I think that there, that part of the purpose of this, we now have the Washington Post and the New York Times reporting very similar things, which is essentially they're looking into Bob Mueller and what either going to find out dirt on Bob Mueller. That's clearly, I think, also meant strategically speaking to have a chilling effect on Mueller uh, and his investigators. That we are out there looking at you. Intimidation. Too. We're, you know, we're, we're going, we are not going to just sit back and let you roam uh, uh, all over uh, uh, his finances. We're going to draw lines, and, and if and when you cross them, we're going to have stuff on you. Uh, uh, that is not an accident. That is purposeful to make sure Bob Mueller knows the stakes that he's playing at uh, mm -hmm. here. Uh, and I think the, the, the Trump camp, the, the Trump White House, uh, it seems to me that's a strategic effort on their part. All right, as if there wasn't enough uh, reporting tonight. Jeff, as I understand, we're learning that the spokesman uh, for President Trump's legal team is resigning tonight. What do you know? Why? We, we do know that Marco Corallo, the spokesman for uh, the president's legal team, who's really been in this role for uh, really a couple months or so, he is uh, no longer part of this uh, um, um, of this organization, of this effort here at the White House to speak for the president's outside legal team. And the uh, reality here is, Don, there are some shifting uh, legal strategies and legal uh, teams as well. As the president is uh, uh, bringing in a new lawyer, uh, Ty Cobb, to essentially, you know, be the uh, a quarterback, if you will, for you know the legal strategy here at the White House. The other uh, lawyers in the earlier uh, legal team are receding a bit from uh, public view and the, the main view here. But the spokesman here, Marco Corallo, he's more than a spokesman, though, Don. This is very interesting, because I remember back covering the Bush administration, President Bush, Mark Corallo was a very uh, prominent uh, spokesman communicator at the Justice Department at that time. So he is someone who was viewed as a, as a strong asset to have at this moment to be speaking on behalf of the president. But he is... Uh, I'm stepping away from that uh, role, resigning from that uh, role. Uh, we have not, um, we've confirmed this uh, uh, through a senior administration official, 
Uh, my colleague uh, Jeremy Diamond confirmed this a few moments ago. And we've not yet heard from Mark directly himself, but it does speak to the fact that this is a, a fully engaged legal strategy here. And I think that, you know, before we get it too far ahead of ourselves on, you know, uh, what types of oppo uh, research they're doing on people who work for the special prosecutor and special in in investigators, that's pretty standard practice. Of course you are going to look at every single a lawyer, you know, if they gave any money to another uh, candidate or things. But the reality here is Robert Mueller's been in this town a long time. He hired specific lawyers with specific, uh, you know, uh, skill sets on money laundering, on other things. So he is surely to use their skill sets here. So this is go not going to be simply a matter of discrediting mm -hmm. Bob Mueller. He's yeah. hired a full team here. So this uh, a fight now, six months in, is starting to become fully joined. One can assume for the type of lawyers, uh, investigators he's hiring uh, as to what he's looking into. And I think I'm um, sure the, right. the, the lawyers uh, representing the president uh, and whoever may be involved in that, they know that. Uh, the Post is also reporting tonight the president was, quote, disturbed after learning that Mueller would be able to access, access several years of his tax returns. Yesterday, the president laid down a red line, according to the Times, saying Mueller should not look too far into his family's finances. Well, Bloomberg reporter, his name is Greg Farrell, has been doing some digging on exactly that. So I want you to listen to what he told Anderson just a short time ago. What we've learned is that he's taking a broad view of the investigation and not a narrow view. So the, the mandate he was given in mid-May uh, is open to interpretation. Uh, anything related to Russia and that might have resulted in interference in the election. He's clearly going back more than a decade to any real estate transactions. He's clearly focused on any major transaction that uh, uh, that has taken place, like the, the Miss Universe, you know, 2013 right. budget in Moscow, et cetera, the flipping of the Florida mansion. Um, uh, in order to get information, yes, he'll have to issue subpoenas. So do you know the, the exact financial interest that he's looking into? Donald Trump had bought a house uh, in yes, Florida, a mansion, in Florida. Yes. Uh, that for like $41 million Good or Good memory, something. yes. Yeah, and then sold it. Four years later, in 2008, March of 2008, sold it, having done almost nothing with it, for $95 million to uh, a Russian oligarch. So CNN hasn't independently ver verified his reporting, but it seems like Mueller is aiming directly at Trump's finances. And if that's the case, has Mueller already crossed the president's red line, Chris? It certainly seems to be the case. Again, CNN hasn't independently confirmed that Bloomberg reporting, but but assuming the Bloomberg reporting is right, uh, and, and you add that to what the Post and the Times are reporting tonight, which is that this is a sort of a broadening investigation rather than a narrowing investigation. The Trump folks are trying to fight that. It, it, it seems as though um, that is what's happening here, Don. I, what I don't really know is what Donald Trump's out is. If, if you had asked me a couple weeks ago, would he fire Bob Mueller? I, I would say no. That, that would be, from a purely political uh, handicapping pundit perspective, that would be devastating politically. It would make you look guilty. Um, but then you read these pieces and you, you read what he told the New York Times. This is not, you know, that stuff wasn't uh, based on anonymous sourcing. That was Donald Trump talking to the New York Times. And you think, golly, is he at least giving himself that option as he sort of considers what's next? Mm -hmm. One other quick point. Donald Trump, it is worth remembering and saying over and over again, the only and first major party presidential candidate to not give out even one year of his tax returns. Now, he has said it's because it's under an ongoing audit and he will do it as soon as the audit is over. It's obviously quite a long audit, but uh, he is clearly concerned about doing that. He took a lot of yeah. flack during the campaign for it, and he still refused to do it. He has refused to do it as president. And that line in the post, that to me was the line that stood out the most, which yeah. is Trump is concerned about Mueller's ability to get some of those tax returns, which no one has really been able to see except for drips and drabs here. That and whole there. tax return and auditing, we know that's a ruse because the, the um uh, internal uh, internal revenue has already said, you know, you can still get out. Well, out and your don't tax forget return. Kellyanne Conway, by the way, Don. Kellyanne Conway said after the election, uh, the American people voted on that. He's never going to release that. Yeah. So there so, you go. Yeah.
We'll believe it when we the see American it. American people didn't vote on that one, though. Yeah. <laughs> April, we are, uh, we are learning more about uh, the Jared Kushner closed door appearance before the Senate Intel Committee on Monday. He, he will be interviewed by committee staff. It's not under oath, but lying should be a criminal offense. Why, why not in front of the full committee? Why not the full committee? <laughs> this administration wants to do as much as they can to keep anyone and everyone in the inner circle away from under oath, uh, cameras, anything. Uh, they want to make sure that um, they do the least as possible to make sure that they are okay. But right now, it is under scrutiny. Whatever he says will be under scrutiny. And, and Don, once again, the process, it's about the process and how the process plays out and the lack thereof. So the question is, how does this process play out with Jared Kushner Monday, and how does it continue to play out? That's the big issue. That is the big issue. Democrats and Republicans want it to play out. And if he is not forthcoming, and if he is forthcoming, we will hear information, I'm quite sure, out of that room. But if he is forthcoming, what will he say? Yeah. Will he omit? What, I mean, it's so many questions on the table with Jared Kushner, as well as Donald Trump Jr., as well as this president. So the questions still are coming, even though he may uh, sit and talk Monday. And speaking of Donald Trump Jr., Senator uh, Chuck Grassley, Charles Grassley, said today that he wants an answer from Donald Trump Jr. and Paul Manafort by the end of this week on whether they will testify. He's threatening a subpoena. Could they fight a subpoena, April? They could fight, but again, it's about the process. And if they, they, they may not win this time because this, I mean, people, the smoke is getting darker and darker. When there's smoke, there could be fire. And the more they push against, the more the people in the Senate, the more the American public wants to find out. It's about credibility, and you have to be transparent now. It is opening up, and people want to know what's going on. They want to make sure that everything is on the up and up. So they're going to fight, but we'll see who wins. Uh, the chairman of the Senate Intelligence Committee, Senator Richard Burr, talked about the Mueller investigation today to CNN's Manu Raju. Listen. Do you have any concerns about the president saying that Bob Mueller should not look into the finances of the Trumps? You know, first of all, he said we're not aware of any of this. Secondly, uh, he raised the question that he thought that, you know, what we reported indicates that uh, the special counsel is going beyond.